Well, the child of Sicilian migrants, Serena Rosso, was sacked for a multitude of secretarial jobs early, early in her career. It was an experience that led her to capitalise on her greatest strength, which was typing, to start her own typing school. Now, she said it was a move that emerged out of desperation. Fast forward 36 years and her employment and training business, Serena Rosso Job Access, has become the largest Australian-owned provider within the government's new Job Active Employment Network. It's a win that will see her business triple in size to 93 offices throughout New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria. Well, Managing Director Serena Rosso joins us now to share her story. Serena, great to have you on the program Thank you, today. Ingrid. It's so wonderful to be here. And can I just congratulate you on this fabulous show? Oh. Uh, I think that a lot of uh, viewers are fascinated by careers. Well, we love Because it's about... constantly changing. We're living in an age of technology, age of disruption, and careers keep changing. So this is a great show. I love it. Well, we love getting tips from people Thank like you. you because Thank it's, you. it's certainly interesting to hear your yeah, career it's great. story. So mm. tell us a bit about the beginning, because we've heard in a lot of things that, you know, you, you, you couldn't hold down a job when you were young. Yeah. You got fired from a couple of secretary jobs. How did that sort of contribute well, to, to um, what you are today? It's quite extraordinary, actually. When you look at life and you have to join the dots, you think, well, you know, being fired was a good thing. Um, you know, it's true. I, in fact, I've written a book called Meet Me at the Top, where we actually did um, acknowledge all the bosses that fired me. I used to get fired from every job. Um, maybe it was in my DNA, because my mother used to get fired as well. You know, and um, I used to think, well, why is it that they call me on a Friday? Maybe, you know, it's to review my salary or review my KPI and they'd say, we don't need you on Monday. And I'd say, well, we, you, do you need me on Tuesday? They'd go, not at all. So when that kept on happening, there was a morning I woke up and looked at myself in the mirror and said, I'll do it or die. And I guess it was the day that I realised that I was going to secure myself a job and that was to create my own. And, and that you didn't have any sort of lack of confidence from, from having sort of rejection in the past that just made you sort of stronger in that way? Well... I would be uh, misleading the viewers if I said that um, I didn't have fear. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there are two things in life that really motivate you. One is inspiration and the other one is desperation. Mm -hmm. Well, I was truly desperate. Um, I couldn't cope with being fired, um, which I thought was grossly unfair at the time. And we didn't have, you know, all the things that we have today where you could go and appeal. You would just accept a dismissal. But my point is, yes, when I first started my business, I had insomnia. And I used to walk around my apartment going, oh, Lord, how is this all going to work? Do you think desperation helps with motivation, though? Oh, totally, totally, because it's your interpretation yep. of your experiences, Ingrid. It's how you interpret your experiences that help you to fail or help you to grow. And a lot of people that are demotivated just see themselves as a victim. But, you know, if you can switch that, mm. if I could just change one people's mind right now, you look at it and say, what can I learn from this? Where's the silver lining? How can I elevate my thinking? Because rejection is normal. You know, problems are normal. Yeah. You know, today we have good quality problems in our business. It doesn't mean that, you know, problems don't mm -hmm. stop, but they become good quality problems. You know, growth for us is a good quality problem. Yeah. So it's how you interpret life. Now, you say you had insomnia when you first started your business. Can you tell us a bit about the beginnings? I mean, how did you sort of get into that industry? What made you start? And, and how did you grow? Because obviously something set you apart from everybody else. Well, um, that's a great question, um, Ingrid. What happened was I didn't have a day job at this particular time in my life. I got a phone call from key personnel that said, would I like to become a typing teacher. And I said, well, that sounds great. I'm a great typist. I'll, I'll take the job. And they gave me something like two students. Well, within two years, I grew this business. I grew the whole class. And it, there was a magic that I had because I'd been fired so many times. I could actually tell the students how to get that job, you know, how not to get fired because I'd experienced it all, right? So, um, the dots again. so then they fired me there as well. But I had two years of learning to teach yeah. um, students how to become secretaries and when I got fired my students reinstated me not my supervisor my yeah. students and that gave me a boost of confidence to think I can start my own right. and I did and key personnel no longer exists we kill them off <laughs> so what sets you apart you know when, when you started to sort of realize success what do you think it was that was setting you apart from others did you have many competitors sort of midway through? totally totally but you, what's really really important is that competition is very very helpful healthy. You know, you, you've got to value your industry and you've got to value that industry have got great competition. And so you don't sort of um, fear from them. You, you look at what they are doing and make sure that with your customers, you're giving them a point of difference. 
You know, for example, getting that job, getting people to type or education that this government says must lead to jobs. And that's what I found out, that there was no point in just teaching unless you get them a job. And our point of difference at that time was getting them a job. And that was really relevant. It really worked. And, you know, my first um, grad, I said, I'll get you a job. I rang up a brother in law was in a legal office. And he said, well, we have no work here, but my friend's arch you know, um, accountant yeah. has got a vacancy. And that girl stayed in that job for about 10 years. Yeah. And that's really a boost of confidence for us because if you help your customer win, you win as well. Yeah. Now, you're obviously very entrepreneurial and you've made the rich list a few times. I want to know, when you started making, sort of realising cash flow and, and making lots of money, did you think about whether to reinvest it in the business, whether to sort of ca cash up and buy a lot of stuff, or whether to sort of invest it in, in things for the long term for you? What did you do with your money? Okay, so when I started my business, I had something like $2,600. I went to the bank and I said, I need an overdraft. And they said, well, you need security. At that time, I had just bought myself an apartment. I had a mortgage. Oh, yeah. I said, well, I'll give you $2,000. Um, but as far as other security, I have shoes. So, you know, I had to acknowledge that things were going to get tough for me. So I realized then that I needed cash flow. And cash flow is really, really important, but also expenses are important as well. If you, if you spend more than what the money's coming in, you're going to go broke. So that drove me to really develop sales technique. And, you know, I joined a motivational seminar, you know, uh, Jim Rowan. He taught me that failure was okay. You could fail. Uh, and that gave me confidence. So cash flow is very, very important. Today, cash flow is still important as we're rolling up 200 locations in the whole of Australia. I mean, it's extraordinary, but you also need cash flow. And so when we tended for this job active and apprenticeships and needs, and, and, and disability, we then had a, a focus which was to keep our cash in case we won. And we won big, which was really extraordinary. So you know, we don't have equity partners, and that gives you more control. Because yeah. when an equity partner comes in or a bank comes in and says, well, we'll give you the money, but we're going to guarantee all your um, assets, yeah. it really gives you limitations of thought. So having cash flow is vitally important yeah. in business. You're going from 27 to 93 offices. That's um, right. Thanks to this We've done it. We've done it. We're in Western yeah. Sydney right now. Right. We're in the whole of um, Queensland. We've captured Queensland because I love being called the job queen in Queensland. And also we have uh, Victoria um, and Australian Capital Territory. We have something like 1,200 staff. We're also in the UK because in 2009 we didn't win big. But I didn't let that experience stop us. We grew into the UK and now we have like, you know, fabulous people. People like, you know, Ewan Blair, Tony Blair's son, who's our CEO. We're in Coventry. We had Prince Andrew check us out. I mean, we've created activity, we've created awareness, and we've created a strong brand of trust. And that's why I'm excited to be here, because employers want to partner with us, because we understand business, and we understand that we can help them get the right staff, their bottom line will, will grow, and so will their expansion and customer satisfaction. Just finally, we've only got about 30 seconds left, but I just want to get your tip on how to stay motivated, because you've obviously, this has been a really tough period, or I mean, an exciting period but trying to grow You rapidly. mean my time is up? Rapidly. But what, what's your tip for staying well, motivated? I think the most important thing is self-belief. Yep. It doesn't matter what other people think. It matters what you think. And give it a go. It's better to give it a go and fail than never to have given it a go. And the other thing is fitness. Mm -hmm. You've got to stay fit and you've got to learn and you've got to disrupt yourself because if you don't disrupt yourself, someone else will. Shereen Rosso, great advice. Thank you Thank so Thank you much very for much. Us on the Thank show. you. That was right. great. Thanks. That is all we have time for on this edition of Your Career. We've got more news and analysis coming up next, so stick around.